Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my first look at the newest little lens from Sigma. It's not often that I get to say a little lens from Sigma, but in the case of their DN series for both APS-C mirrorless, I've got it here on a Sony platform. It's also available for Micro Four Thirds, but their DN line have proven to be nicely compact and usually quite optically good um, little prime lenses for that setup. In this case, they have delivered to us a 50 six millimeter f 1.4 maximum aperture lens with their um, their DC um, designation here so the 56 millimeter f 1.4 becomes kind of the de facto go-to portrait option if you want a compact one for these mirrorless platforms in this case in full frame equivalency you have about an 84 millimeter focal length and of course, if you're looking at micro four thirds, you've got 112 millimeter focal length. And so both of those uh, focal length equivalents are within the sweet spot of doing portrait work. And obviously a very nicely bright maximum aperture of f1.4 um, makes it even more useful for shooting portraits, particularly if it's actually sharp at f1.4. Spoiler alert, it is. If you are familiar with kind of Sigma's basic design, then there's a lot that is going to be familiar here. And so we're going to take a closer hands-on look at the build and the construction, noting that now they have added some weather sealing into this design, which is an improvement over the earlier DN uh, uh, series lenses that they had produced. But as you can see, they've managed to produce a optically excellent but also nicely compact lens and makes me wonder why in the world they can't do something similar with their full frame lenses. But all of that aside, let's take a closer look at the 56 millimeter F1.4 from Sigma. All right, we're gonna take a look at the 56 millimeter F1.4 up close here. So a few things here, as you can see, these newer DN lenses from uh, Sigma, they went away from the original look. Now, this is one of the original trio of uh, primes that I still have on hand. It's a 60 millimeter f2.8. And so this is kind of the closest competitor in terms of focal length, you know, very similar focal lengths. But the uh, first generation of these, this one was made in 2013, um, they had a smaller maximum aperture. This is only an f2.8 lens, and, and so obviously a little bit more compact. Um, also, they were branded as art series. Now, ironically, Sigma has moved to a more robust construction with wider maximum apertures, and they have called them contemporary lenses. So, uh, yeah, you figure that one out. But anyway, uh, looking at this, it looks very much like, say, a 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter f1.4 um, art series lens for Canon or Nikon. Very similar design, similar kind of mix of, of what they call thermal composite, which is their engineered plastics along with some you know, metal bits based around a metal frame, very nicely constructed. And as was the case with the 16 millimeter, they have started to add internal weather sealing, a gasket here, along with a total of four seal points. And so um, definitely getting a better quality um, of actual construction. Now, as we can see, this is a more physically robust lens in terms of its dimensions. It is 2.3 or 2.62, I should say, inches around in diameter or 66 and a half millimeters. And so as you can see, um, it's definitely bigger around than what the older DN lens was. But remember, this is a maximum aperture of F2.8 versus F1.4. So that's a, an extra two full stops of light gathering potential of this new lens. And if you look in there, you know, you look at the amount of glass you can tell that this is a much more serious optic uh, for light gathering at the very least. And so beyond that, uh, the older DN lenses, they had basically just a, a smooth part of the barrel that you, you focused there. And so, you know, obviously there are limitations to that. It's, you know, it doesn't have the same kind of grip. Here we have a more, you know, kind of modern, tightly ribbed, nice feeling focus ring, along with some other texture variations that is similar to the design language that Sigma has employed. Uh, I put this construction here, if not fully at art series, which I actually think it's very close in terms of construction. At the very least, it is, it is a nicer built lens than a lot of the contemporary lenses that I've used um, beyond that. You can see this is a 2018 lens 
And so uh, a few other things. And so we've looked at the, the the fact that it is wider in girth, but actually in total length, it's actually a very still a very compact lens. It's 2.34 inches or 59.5 millimeters. And the weight, while it does have a little bit of heft to it because it's got glass, you know, it's an f1.4 lens. It is only 9.9 .9 ounces or 280 grams. And so in an absolute sense, it is a very lightweight lens that obviously is a really, really nice pairing size wise and weight wise with, um, you know, bodies like the new a6400 or the a6500 or similar cameras. And so you're going to find your balance is good. Um, I really like what you are getting here in terms of the construction. Obviously having a maximum aperture of f1.4 is great. This lets in a lot of light. It allows you to have a very shallow um, depth of field. And, uh, and so as a portrait type lens, basically this is going to behave as, you know, essentially like in full frame terms, like an 85 millimeter F2 in terms of the actual depth of field. Light gathering, it ha would have an advantage because it can gather uh, F1.4 worth of light there. You can see maybe looking at the aperture blades inside that there are nine blades, rounded aperture blades, which is pretty standard for uh, Sigma lenses. That's pretty much their approach. The optical formula is 10 elements in six groups. Now the lens itself, remember that behavior wise, my personal closest comparison is going to be to full frame 85 millimeter lenses. And it behaves roughly similar to those when it comes to minimum focus distance. It can focus down to about 50 centimeters or uh, 1.64 feet. And so moderately close. And there it has what is a somewhat pedestrian 0.135 times magnification. So between 0.13 and 0.14. And while that's not fantastic in an absolute sense, remember that the best functioning 85 millimeter lens that I'm aware of um, in that regard is the Tamron 85 millimeter F1.8 VC, and it sports only a 0.14 times magnification. So barely any more than this. It's not a great figure, but it's actually very competitive and better than most competing 85 millimeter lenses. So this is an auto focusing lens. It has, um, has STM focus motors in it. So autofocus is actually very fast and extremely silent with this lens. Um, you will find that when you're making major focus changes, it's a little bit of a gradual and smooth as opposed to jumping right to it. But overall, the autofocus here is, is nice and snappy. And for most you know, normal focus changes, it moves quite quickly, considering that you are moving a fair bit of glass in there. Autofocus sound is very, very quiet. You know, one thing that kind of bu bug people about the older lenses is that they, they tended to rattle when, um, when the elements were not actually activated. And so that bothered people about that. Um, no such problem here. I mean, this is a, shut that sound out. There's nothing that's rattling around. So if that bugs you about the older DN lenses, that's no longer the case with the newer ones like this. And so as you can see, a lot of uh, good things going on here. We have a 55 millimeter um, filter thread up front which is not a particularly common one. I would prefer either 52 or 58 millimeters. Um, either of those is a more common filter thread size, but you know what you got is 55 millimeters. So there's probably a good chance that you don't have any 55 millimeter uh, filters in your kit, and you're probably gonna want to snag a few of them. You know, you have the benefit of having, you know, a very sharp lens with a maximum aperture of f1.4. So it sucks in a lot of light and there's going to be occasions where you're wanting to sync with flashes that you're want to, going to have that shallow depth of field, but you also want to limit the amount of light reaching the sensor. So a few filters uh, can be the ticket to getting that done. Now, one thing I will finally comment on is that I actually like the lens a little bit better on the a6500. While the a6400 has a, a slightly more robust focus system, um, in real life practice, I found that the lens still works very well on the a6500. And the big difference is, is that with the a6500, you're getting the steady shot or in-body and in image stabilization, which means that you now have a stabilized 56 millimeter F1.4, which you don't have on the a6400. At the end of the day though, a bright maximum aperture means whether you have in-body image stabilization or not, it's not a terribly hard lens to handhold because you can suck in a lot of light and it's easy to get your shutter speed up on that.
So as you can see, this is a beautifully made, nicely handling lens that really the build quality, it seems to, to me to be very, very similar to that of their art series, um, just in a more compact package. And functionally, it seems to work very similarly to that. And so a lot of good things going on in a lens that, you know, comes to market at a, you know, a moderate price. Uh, I would say even a moderately good price of um, retail of $479 um, US in the US market. And I think already there's a $50 rebate. So at the time that I'm doing this review at the moment, it's about $429. And so for a very nicely built, compact, weather sealed uh, portrait prime lens for your mirrorless system, pretty good deal really, all things considered. Stay tuned and I'll be back to you with a full um, image quality breakdown and final verdict on this lens. On top of that, I'll also, um, if you can look in the description down below, you can also take a look at my ongoing image gallery. I've fortunately had this little lens along for a couple of trips, and so I've got a lot of beautiful images with it, along with a number of portrait type um, images. And so you want to take a look at that. But in that final verdict, I'll also give you some look at the uh, autofocus performance and uh, how all of that uh, works out, IAF, all of that good stuff. So stay tuned and I'll be back to you with my final verdict um, coming shortly. I'm Dustin Abbott and if you'll look in the description down below you can also follow me there on social media including now on Instagram. Um, you can also become a patron and help to support what I'm doing along with getting sneak previews of upcoming content and a chance to interact before anyone else does. And on top of that if you haven't already please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.